Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for bringing us through so many trials in our lives, and and for bringing my husband through his back surgery today. Yes, Lord. Amen. Oh, and God yes, bless Dr. Amen. Lamb and the surgical team for doing yes. such a great job. Yes. And I ask you, Lord, to just bless the words that Walt has to say and speak through him and help us to have good listening ears mm -hmm. and learning hearts. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you for giving us your love for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Okay. Now, I'm sure that everyone in here has heard these next three words many times. <clears throat> unearned, unmerited, undeserved. And what have you heard that in relation to? I know, I know. My paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. I would paycheck. never say that. <laughs> Who say that? That's, just wrong. That's a good one. That is. Yeah, baby. That is. <laughs> That's Do I deserve wrong. like it? I must have, because I'm getting it. I've had jobs like that, yeah. And Terry Sue wants to answer that question. Well, so. actually, I'm going undeserved. to be the, the wayward student and ask the teacher to please repeat the question. Yes, yes. the three. Okay, the, there's three words we're all familiar with. We've heard them dozens of times. Unearned, unmerited, undeserved. We hear them in the same context? I mean, yes. Do we hear them as a collection, just like that? Yes. Uh, you heard them yes. in relation to... In relation to your salvation yeah. and to the grace and the mercy of God. And so, what was the question? Where have you heard them? Where have you heard them? What, what do they mean to you? Oh, what do they mean to what, me? Where have you? And, and I'm, you've all heard them. What do they? What do they mean See, to you? When, oh, in okay. relation undeserved, to what? Undeserved, unmerited, and the unearned. And unearned. Mm -hmm. Ah. Well, I'm going to pick undeserved. No, you have to give them all three. <laughs> oh, yeah. All three of them. Oh, man. Take them oh. all three. Oh, you got to take them all on. Expoundsville. But you're going to myth bust on them anyway, aren't you? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust, bust the whole myth. That's a good Yay. word. Oh, what is that called? Bust? Myth buster. Myth busting. Myth busting. Myth busting. Well, disabuse yeah. us. All that. three of them. I'll go ahead and... and yeah, yeah, you go ahead. I'll go ahead and start, savage. and then you can, the you, can, you can chime in whenever you... Just give me a little heads up when, when you're reading. <laughs> well, to begin with, these three words are not in the Bible anywhere. Mm. They're not even in Webster's Dictionary mm -hmm. anywhere. They're not even in Webster's Dictionary? Nope. They do not exist. That's amazing. They do not exist. In that context. Okay. Okay. But we all know what they mean, right? Mm -hmm. Because they well, do. Yeah, tell me anyhow. I hope so. They, they are legitimate words. Well, to us, but they're not in my dictionary, and they're not in the Bible. That's interesting. Believe me. Uh, of course, you know, unearned means you didn't you didn't do anything for it. Right. And unmerited, exactly the same thing. Those two are synonymous. They mean okay. almost exactly the same thing. If you merit something, that means you earned something. You performed something, something to 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 do that, something. to acquire that. To and. Uh, and and that's where that's where deserved or undeserved comes in. If you if you earned it and you merited it, then you deserve it, right? Mm -hmm. If you didn't do any of those things, if you didn't earn it, you didn't merit it, then you don't deserve it, right? Well, yep. But so we understand the meaning to be the opposite of the root word, which is earn, merit, or deserve, right? Yeah, yes. the exact opposite. Yep. But yes. they're still not in the dictionary, and they're not in the Bible. But in every Practically, I'd say at least half the sermons you hear when they speak of grace and mercy right. and unconditional love and favor of God and favor, it's all unearned, unmerited, undeserved. But I got oh, I have a little I have a whole nother take on that, uh, and, I, and I believe God spoke to me about this a few weeks back one morning. Uh, unearned, unmerited, yeah. We didn't do a thing for it. We didn't. We didn't do a, a thing to deserve any of those things. Uh, God's grace and mercy. But, let me go on. I'll read what I wrote down. They are used often in Christian speak, which is, you know, in, in church and stuff, regarding our opportunity for salvation and reconciliation with Father God through the death and resurrection of His Son, 
and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. That's what that's what that's what we're using them in context with. Okay, and in conjunction with are those things. Uh, they can also be considered synonymous, which means they have uh, similar meanings, especially the unearned and unmerited. Okay, uh, especially, uh, but not so much with undeserved. You had to do something to get it. Okay, if you earn it, you know, like you earn your paycheck, or you know, like she said, or, or work, you know, or you did something to merit it, uh, whatever. You know, yeah, but uh, but not necessarily. Uh, in the uh, with with dessert, uh, yeah. yeah, that was perfect. Wasn't yes. it? it was perfect. Uh, our opportunity for salvation and reconciliation with God is strictly based on His grace, mercy, and the love brought about by His Son Jesus when He came bringing the new covenant of grace and truth. Period. Uh, and I'll get into that later, but I want to read a couple of scriptures first so we can look them up. If you didn't bring your Bible, huh? Yeah, I did. Oh, I brought did. my glow in the dark Bible. Okay. I brought my Bible. Uh, in relation to that new covenant, I want to read <gasps> Hebrews 8, verses 8 through 13, and Hebrews 9, 13. I got it. And John, chapter 1, 16 and 17. I got Hebrews. I could take John. Okay. Okay, go ahead and read Hebrews chapter 8, verses 8 through 13. Right. Okay. But God found fault with the people and said, <clears throat> The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. Mm -hmm. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turn away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord. Because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. Mm -hmm. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Right. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. Right. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. Exactly. Ooh, that's a heavy one. That's good. Yeah, it is. Well, that's... That's what Jesus brought, and this was prophesied in the Old Testament. This is just a reprint in the New Testament in Hebrews from where it was originally prophesied in the Old Testament, because uh, they knew Jesus was coming. One of the old prophets back there prophesied that. I don't remember exactly which one. I should, but I don't. Uh, I'll try to guess, because we're on film. So. But, uh, but that, that's what Jesus brought. He brought the new covenant of grace and truth, where we no longer... Are, are under a uh, under the law, which is all performance based. You know that that was that was strictly a perf all the all of the covenants leading up to the one that Jesus brought were but all performance based covenants. Yeah. Are we still under the law? I mean, is that what Jesus told Not us? Necessarily. Okay. Uh, the original law was was the Ten Commandments. Okay. That's it. Okay. And and then <clears throat> by the time the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees got through with it. We're into 630 something. Yeah. And and but the basic law, Jesus did not change, and he didn't come to change that. He said he didn't come yeah, to change that's it. What I was, yeah, that's what I'm bringing up. Yeah. I thought because the basic law is pretty much covers everything as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, if, if sure you, does. If 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 you base if you base your faith on what God <clears throat> intends us to base it on, which is love, then you won't you won't break any laws. No, you won't. Because all those laws are against, are are are, are made so to protect people. And any time you break the law, you're breaking the law against against the people. You're sinning against the people. You're you're doing something that that uh, that tells everybody you don't really love. Because if you did, you wouldn't do that with those people. To those people, you wouldn't steal from them. You wouldn't covet your neighbor's wife. You wouldn't kill anybody, etc., etc. You know, you just wouldn't, and you wouldn't. Worry. <coughs> The first one, you wouldn't worship any other god. 
except they're, they, they got our Creator. So, so that's what that is. And then John 1, 16 and 17. Okay. John 1, 16 and 17. And of His fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's just another look, that's another perspective. Well, not, not necessarily another perspective, it's just saying the same thing in a different way. Uh, but I like the part about the New Covenant where it says, you won't, that you read, it says you won't have, you no longer have to, to tell your neighbor, teach your neighbor, etc. It will be written in their hearts and on their in their minds and on their hearts. And uh, that's that's so important because uh, we really don't have a reason or an excuse, do we? And you're not part. You don't have a reason or an excuse about saying I didn't know. Oh yeah. Or I don't know. Yeah. Or nobody ever told me because. Uh, uh, the gospel of of, uh, of Jesus Christ in the New Testament is pretty much spread throughout the whole world, and uh, I mean even in the, uh, in the in the Muslim countries they know a lot about Jesus. Jesus is in their book. They all know about Jesus and what Jesus brought. It's in their book, and uh, so there's there's really no excuse when when it comes to standing before the Lord. Someday we all will have to. Explaining, you won't have an excuse. You won't have a reason to give that you didn't know who Jesus really was. But, uh, but that's another another story. So, so, so we did not have to earn this opportunity that we have to come into salvation and relationship uh, with with God. We didn't have to earn it in any way, shape, or form. It was an opportunity that's put before us that we voluntarily voluntarily accept or reject. Because we have free will, right? Mm -hmm. And we can say yes. We can say no. Or we can say no. And whatever direction we take, we 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 have we have consequences no matter which way we go. And uh, good consequences. And that's you reap what you sow. <laughs> okay. Hey, you reap what you sow. That's right. Yes, you do. So we just have to believe in him and him and whom he sent. Because I always look at it this way. Uh, Jesus leads us into relationship with God. That's why He came. And that's why He died. So that we would have a pathway to the Father. That's why He says in John uh, 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Me. If you know Me, you know, you know the, Father. the Father. Yeah. And you have, to, uh, you have to accept Jesus and what He did in order to get to the Father. But in order, when you accept Jesus and what He did, you're also accepting that God is His Father, and God is the creator of the universe and everything and everybody in it. And uh, He's all-knowing, all-present, and etc., etc. So, anyway. So, so my question is this, after all that, since we know about what I'm talking about, unearned, unmerited, and undeserved. Uh, my question is this. Why do some of our brothers and sisters in Christ insist on telling each other and the world that we didn't deserve this opportunity? Isn't that a converse way, I think I lost my thought, a converse way of explaining grace? Mm, no. Say, no. No. Could be, so in some context, it could be another way of saying the same thing. Because, well, because grace is unearned, undeserved, yeah. unmerited. So, well, I wouldn't say it's undeserved. That's my argument. Like, right because there. I don't know how the context of how. Yeah. Well, I would say it's it's not. You don't have to earn it. It was, it was given freely right. by God. Grace. He didn't have to merit it, which is basically same the same thing. Basically, the same thing. Deserve it. I'm going to get into that deserved part in a couple minutes. Do we deserve it? You're saying. Huh? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's what I'm going to explain. Okay. Going to talk about. So, uh, does anybody want to add to that question that I had about about deserving the opportunity? Does Does anybody so feel why why people don't does feel anybody like they do? Does any does why do people tell each other that we didn't deserve this opportunity or we don't deserve this opportunity? Well, 
I think it's because they don't realize just how much God loves humanity, even in all their foibles. Mm -hmm. Because in the human world, we have our set moral system where one sin is huge and, and one sin is really tiny. And so they have all these different levels. And so if the, the rapist, murderer, or cannibal guy yeah. deserves unmerited favor and grace, mm -hmm. well, that's just not possible because he did all that stuff where the teenager that stole the candy bar, oh, they deserve grace. They're fine. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, it was just a candy bar. It was a candy bar. Yeah, but sin is sin is sin. Whether it's black, white, green, or polka dotted, right. or ugly, or pretty, sin is sin mm -hmm. is sin, and grace is for all of us. Well, uh, another take off But on, people don't understand that. Another, another uh, thing to add to that is, uh, uh, if we, I'm sure you've, you've all been around certain Christians that that just kind of consistently are are, are humble and they, and they kind of go like this. Now I'm just a poor sinner. Oh, Save yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Save no. Do you, you think that's attractive to people that aren't no that aren't Christians? I think it stinks, sorry. No, I think they go the other direction. Uh-huh. I think they go the other direction. You gotta be up and happy yeah. and joyful. You have to be you have to be proud, and strong, yes. and stand up for what you believe, yeah. and uh, be joyful and happy, and uh, be but at peace, and be firm in your commitment to what you believe, and, and that's yeah. that's what attracts people. Yeah, because if they that, see somebody being people. all sad like they are, no, it's like, well, your God doesn't sound that very powerful. I mean, yeah. I could drink something and feel better than you look. I mean, the only one, the one you have to be humble, for, humble with is God. That's right. That's what you have to be humble before. And I don't mean that you put yourself above anybody else. That's strictly, there's, there's some strict, uh, strict scripture about not placing yourselves above anybody at any level in society, ever. Because you're not any better than anybody. God loves everybody exactly the same as everybody else. He puts no value on That's right. how much money you make, what kind of power you possess, where you live, what you drive, any of those material things. None. He doesn't put any value in, on any of that. He puts value on, do you believe in Him, and His Son, and the Holy Spirit? And do you do what He tells you to do? You know, that's, what, <clears throat> that's what He puts value on. So, I'll get to the next question. Uh, did God not create us in His image, and does He not love us unconditionally? We, we, he didn't make us in His image. Yeah, and he definitely loves us unconditionally. Yeah, and I, want, I, can't, I, want to I can't get it out right now. I'm going to throw I want to show you some scriptures that relate to that. So, okay. Genesis 1, 27, and Genesis 5, 1 and 2. 1, 27. Yeah. 1, 27 and 5, 1 and 2. I got the 1, 27 if anybody don't want it. Okay. Okay. Genesis, first book in the Bible there. Shane. Genesis what? Genesis yes. 5, verses 1 and 2. And then Genesis 126. And which one which one do you have? Genesis 5, 1 and 2. Okay, who's got 127? I got it. Okay, go ahead. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, He created them. Mm -hmm. Male and female, He created them. Right. And now this next one's even better. We're going to five? One to five. Genesis five, verses one and two. Okay. Go ahead, Shane. Shane's good. Okay. Uh, four, three? No. Genesis, Genesis five? Chapter five. Chapter five. And okay. One and verses two. Verses one and two. Oh, okay. One and two. First two verses. This is a written account of Adam's family family line. No. That's what I've got. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the beginning. Okay. Okay. Number two. I'm forgetting it then. You can go right in. Go right in. That's, it goes right into the go one. Go ahead. Yeah, right. shut up all. Well, God created mankind. He made them in the likeness of God. 
He created them, male and female, and blessed them, and he named them mankind when they were created. There you right. go. That's it. Yeah. I always like to bring those verses up when they, yeah. when they talk about the different positions mm -hmm. men and women have in church. You know? And uh, how women have always been kind of thought of as subservient. <laughs> That's changed. Yeah. Okay. Oh, definitely. That's changed. Oh, definitely. But, uh, changing. But right there ought to be a clear indication that God created men and women yes. together. Equally. Equally. And he called them, the the term he called them was like any other species, mankind. mankind. That's called something. Mankind. <laughs> there's men and there's women and mankind. That's, right. that's that. But anyway, I like that because... Uh, uh, we're created in His likeness, in His image. That means we have a lot of we have available to us once we accept Him and His Son and the Holy Spirit. We have available to us a lot of the characteristics of God because when when Jesus, the Holy Spirit, come into you, you you have those characteristics in you, the same characteristics characteristics as God. So should you walk around like this? I'm just a poor, saved sinner. No. No, you shouldn't, because if you're if you're a Christian and you have you, and you've accepted Jesus and the Holy Spirit living in you, you think that God wants that portrayal in that way? I don't think He does. No, I don't think He does. You should be bursting with the characteristics of Christ, which right. is joy and peace, yeah. and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Talking about them. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. So anyway, so we do have the DNA of our Creator, don't we? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I think we do. <clears throat> Didn't God love us enough to send His Son as an atoning sacrifice once and for all for all mankind? That's that's the definition of unconditional love. How is there any human being on this earth that could do that? I have no. to really, really love us. Yeah. I oh mean, yeah. I mean. Oh yeah. It's 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 impossible for me to believe anything <clears throat> else with what He did with, mm -hmm. with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With what Jesus did for us. So. I want to read Hebrews 9, 24 through 28, and 1 John 4, 10. Okay. So we got to... 9. We have Hebrews. to give Lisa a chance to read something here. Yeah. And 1 John? 1 John. I'm done, you guys. You guys go. 4, 10. And Hebrews 9, 24 through 28. 9, 24 through 28. Okay. Is it hot in here? Is it no. Just... Nah, it's a little warm. I'm getting worked up. Yeah, you gotta work out. I, this heater's been off all day. I just had them two little electric ones on. You're just on fire. I just, <laughs> You're burning up right now, brother. Okay. Smoking. First John 4.10. 1 John 4.10. 1 John 4.10. You want to read? Who wants to read Hebrews? And who wants to read 1 John? Lisa. You got Hebrews, Lisa? Yeah, Lisa's going to do 1 John 4.10. Okay. okay, go ahead. Okay. 24 through 28. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands. That was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the most high holy place, every year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once for all at the culmination of ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Mm -hmm. Just as people are disdained to die once and after they that to face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. Yeah. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Okay. First John four ten. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and set, sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So He came once, the first time. He's going to come again, but He came that one time to. Uh, to cover all the sins, past, present, and future, of everyone in the world, once they accept Him. You have to accept Him. You have to receive Him into your heart. Accept what He did, acknowledge what He did, and receive Him into your heart. And uh, 
that covers everybody. And, and you know, so many people, and I'm getting a little off track here, but so many people have a problem uh, uh, asking for forgiveness for things that they did. I mean, they don't think that they should be forgiven or can, can be forgiven. And, oh, yeah. some, and sometimes they won't forgive other people for what they did to them. Uh, and, and it's really, you know, it's already, God's already forgiven all of those things. And, uh, and when we can't not accept what Jesus did, we're kind of putting ourselves above that, or above, what, above Him, aren't we? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if you cannot accept that, that God, the, the Creator of the world, has forgiven everybody, everything, if you just ask, I, and, I mean, what kind, of a, what kind of life is that going to live, going to be for you if you live with this guilt and this shame hanging over you all the time? Yeah. What kind of a witness are you to everyone else? If you, if you can't forgive yourself, right. that means um, it's good enough for God, but it's not good enough for you. That's so a, you, That's a simpler way to put you're, it. Right? You're holding yourself above God. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can't do that. You can't do that. You just got to lay it all down and say, hey, I did it. All right, it's gone. It's over. I'm done. And move on down it's the road. It's a past. Clean right. slate. Let it go. That's, that's it. And I did it that this year. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was hard to do, wasn't it? Oh, my uh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. But I, I got through it. It's hard for a lot of people. And then some people maybe not, but I mean, it's hard. it depends on what you did. I think. We like to hold on to those things because yeah. because because they... you know why? Because we I, well, that's a, that that I want to know why. Why was that all that's, that's, a, lot of, that's right. a lot of people's identity. Yep. Okay, that's what they relate. Okay, their whole right. life okay, and their whole identity too. And that's, that's, yeah. that's their comfort. Yeah, uh, it's uh, a, it gives them a sense of importance. Uh -huh. You know, it's and you're right, Terry Sue. What did you say? Yeah. Um, I said it's like their comfort zone. It's yeah. what they're used to. Yeah. yeah. So they're comfortable with yeah, that. Yeah. No, 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 not going to change. Change does not come easy to change most people. Change is scary. <laughs> it is. Ah. When you're, you know, you've been on a path so long. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to jump off that path. Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty hard sometimes. Yeah. It, it is. Great. I'll, I'll, I'll agree. I'll admit it's hard to change. Now you get set in your ways. Excuse me. You get set in your ways, whether they're good or bad ways. You get set in them. You don't like stepping out of that rut. You know. It's so. Carving a new path. So yeah. anyway, but God makes it so much easier once mm -hmm. you once you do it. I mean, He will yeah. enable you to do it if you just lay it down and do what He asks. You know, yeah. it makes it so much easier. Anyway, I think that God thought that we deserved that this opportunity of grace yeah. and uh, mercy for salvation and reconciliation. Otherwise, why would he ask his one and only son to be a blood sacrifice for us? That's my question. But, I mean, we already answered that. So, how could God possibly consider doing this if he did not love us unconditionally and decide that we deserved it? We deserve it. We have to admit and we have to accept that we deserved what he gave us. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You know, we're not undeserving. We're, we're, we're deserving it. No, we didn't have to do to work for it. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to do anything. But we do have, we do have one thing. We do have one thing. <coughs> <coughs> he is omniscient, right? What? All-knowing. All-knowing. I, I think I'm pronouncing that right, aren't I? Omniscient, yes. Yeah, he's all-knowing. He knows everything that came before and everything that's going to come he, he, in the he future. already knows it all. He knows the whole story. Sorry, know it alls to burst your bubble. Yeah. God really knows it all. <laughs> so all he asks us to do to deserve this, if you want to call this a condition, all we have to do is acknowledge who and what he is, who his son is and what his son did for us, and what the Holy Spirit is and what and and, and let the Holy Spirit guide us. Just we have to acknowledge that, we have to accept that truth. And then, and, and, it, and that's not all. That's, that's only two, two. It's like a three-step process. You have to say, okay, I believe that. Okay, I accept that as truth. And okay, I receive that inside. Mm -hmm. And I receive it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to walk in it. Now, and, 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 you know, God's a God of many second chances. So you step off that path, which most of us have done multiple times, I think, over the years. So I was doing it every day, don't we? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> many second chances. Yes. I'll take you right back. Take you right back. So, and uh, anyway, those are conditions. Those are the, if you want to call those conditions, those are conditions. But I mean, all you have to do is just come into agreement. 
I mean, that's not a very tough thing to do, I don't think. That's for very me. Huh? Forgive me, Lord. Right then when you did it. For, just, 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 if you break a sin, right then and there you go, hey, forgive me, Lord. Yeah. I made a mistake. You made a mistake. Let's get over it. Yeah. Move on. I used a bad word, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, Slipped out. Which I, which I do that. Okay. The tongue. Then you got nasty re tongue. Then okay. you got to repent. He said, repent. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. After that, repent. don't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Change yeah. your way of thinking. And I think you'll think about it yeah. as you go on. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. It, it, about it, saying it, that word or whatever it is that you're going to do. It's that black dog, white dog thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Whatever dog you feed the most, white dog being the good dog, uh -huh. black dog being the bad. Whatever you feed the most is going to is going to make the other one get be smaller. A, be the tough dog. Smaller, smaller, yeah. To yeah. me, it's a matter of, of um, how does God's heart feel? It's not about guilt, but you want to please God's heart. Yeah. And is this what I'm doing, pleasing God? And if it's not, then stop it. Well, the, well, you the know? whole thing is, when you do it and you know it was something you shouldn't do, and you feel that it's something you should do, and you feel that you just probably uh, disappointed Him, that's that right there. Is 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 is, is it, you know that you that that you have that you're in a relationship, and you have to you yeah, know, yeah, and you have to. You know, you have to atone for that right away. Just and the, and the more times you do, uh, the the more you do it, or or the less, you do it. the more you atone for what you did, the less that 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 it just gets less and less and less. It won't and happen before you know it. You don't have that. You that, won't have that. You have, that. To, you have to replace a bad habit with a good habit. Right. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And then the well, bad she, habit she always said, <laughs> "Devil's bad, God's good." That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. Not That's the other right. way around. That's right. Okay. You know, there's one thing that came to my mind um, as you were talking about deserving. Mm -hmm. If we didn't, des if we don't deserve, if mankind in general does not deserve these things, mm -hmm. then God, I think, would have ended us in the garden. A long time ago. But because He values us, because we are His creation, His beloved creation, mm -hmm. we do deserve it. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be here right now. Yeah. But the, the reason those things are required to come into a relationship with Him and that you accept His Son and Him and the Holy Spirit is that He can't stand in the presence of sin. You know that. That's why He abandoned Jesus on the cross temporarily. You know, because you know, when, Jesus you know, went Jesus to hell. Said, my God, my God, where art thou? Or, why have you forsaken me? Why have you me? forsaken me? You know, because God had to step away because He had just taken all the sins of the world on Him when He on that cross and died. Mm -hmm. So he, had, he couldn't be in the presence. But it doesn't mean, with all of us, uh, that he loves us any less. I think he loves us all equally. And I believe he loves us unconditionally whether we are you know, we are in our walk, who thinks we are deserving of this opportunity, and wants us all to be with him someday. Because I think even the people that aren't, that aren't with us yet, the pre-believers we call them, he loves them just as much as he does us. And he wants us to go out there and plant the seed that allow him to water that seed. Right. And change people's minds. Exactly. Okay. Change That's our job. And change, make, make, you know, present him in a way that people that will that people will uh, will accept and will and will believe because it is the truth. And Jesus is the truth. God is the truth. The Holy Spirit is the truth. And that word, the Bible, written written by you know through through His inspiration by people because He inspired them, that is truth. And and you know <clears throat> you have to as you go through this world, you ha as you walk through it, every every person, they have to believe in something. And and and. And the and the and the and the the biggest truth, the the, the uh, because God will speak to you when you when you when you when you, when you read that book. God will speak to you, and God will work with you when you you know. And God will will let you know that He's real, and He's there, and He is the truth and the way. And and <coughs> what other religion in this world could possibly say that I mean no other religion those those leaders of those religions they're all passed away they don't speak to those people the only thing those people have is, is something to read and that word does not speak to them 
Tonga cement statue. Yeah, I mean it's a statue, or it's a it's ridiculous, or it's or it's a book that they read, but it doesn't speak to them. It just no. Nope. It, 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 well, it's not alive. It's not alive, like no. the, like the word, like the it's Bible. It's created by man. Because the Holy Spirit is in you, and you can feel the Holy Spirit speaking to you and working with you. I mean, it's just it's a, it's an incredible thing, and I think it's uh, that's why we we are deserving. And but I like to read some more, uh, some more. John one twelve. First Timothy two one through six and Second Peter three eight through nine. Second Peter what? I'll get that one. Second Peter chapter three. Yes. Verses eight and nine. Okay, got it. First Timothy chapter two, verses one through six. You want me to take that one? Yeah. First Timothy two one through six. Yeah, and John one twelve. Chapter one. Right there. Verse twelve. Over strong sorry. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become a children of God. Child of God, right. Yeah. That's when we come to, we, 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 we automatically switch from just offspring to, to children. Children of God. Yeah. When you accept him and, you're in, and, and Jesus into your heart, and, and the Holy Spirit comes into you, you are now a child of God. No longer out here. You're you're still a, you're still one of his creations. If you're out there, you're still his offspring. But now you're a child. You're part of the family. So First Timothy two one through six. Who wants to read that? Me. Okay. Okay. First Timothy two one through six. Yes. Okay. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions. And giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, yes. the man Christ Jesus, mm. who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ, and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Amen. Is that good or what? Yeah. That's yeah. it all right there. Yep. Love yeah. it. <coughs> now, did Timmy write that or did Paul write that? Paul it was a letter that. from Paul that to his friend Timothy. Timothy. To yeah. Timothy, okay, who, right. who was a, a leader in the church at the time and who needed a push. A little boost. Yeah, yeah. A little boost. he needed a boost. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second Peter three, eight and nine. You said third Peter. Second Peter. Chapter three. Uh oh. Sorry. Verse eight and nine. There is no third Peter. Yeah, you're right. Second Peter. <laughs> sorry. One more time. Sorry, two. Chapter three. I'm sorry. Verse eight and nine. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as soon as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Yeah, that's right. right. He wants, he wants all mm -hmm. the people in this world, absolutely to come everyone, to the knowledge of him, and come to repentance and come live with him. And uh, he holds, uh, like I said, his, mm -hmm. he is when when he when when he. When, 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 when Jesus brought the gospel of grace and truth, God said, I will no longer remember their sins. I will forgive them their sins, and I will no longer remember them. And he wants everybody. He wants everybody. He doesn't want the enemy to get anybody. Right. And that's what used to bug me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it did. Yeah. Okay? You know Guys out there raping kids and doing all that yeah. crap, uh -huh. and they get just as much, and he loves them just as much as he loves me. Mm -hmm. It used to bug me. 
We had, I had to give it up. Yeah, you had to give it up. Yeah, yeah I had to. Yeah, but uh, because you know, you'd be like they say, you're going to be surprised when you get to heaven. Who's there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who's already there. Yeah, people what? you never thought would make it would make it. Yeah, but you know what? The last, the very last minute on your deathbed is like that. That um, that guy, other guy on the cross, saying next to Jesus, remember me. And you're, when, you, when you get to your kingdom, he went to heaven too. Yeah. 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 The one thing that that I was taught and that I I kind of had to learn was that um, if that guy is a murderer and a rapist and all that kind of stuff, and he gets the same chance as me, what that actually says is I can't earn my salvation. Right. Okay. And I don't know if, if that tracks well, but if I didn't have the same right as him and he doesn't have the same right as me, then that means there's something we have to do in order to gain salvation. Right. And we don't gain it by our, what we do or what we don't do. Mm -hmm. It's a free gift. Right. So that's kind of what put that in, in place in my mind. Okay. You know, because, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the flip side of that yeah. coin. And I like that part on the first part there. Uh, a day of the Lord is like a thousand years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, 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 we could go into some serious uh, uh, detail about that, but I won't. But it's something that I'd like everybody to consider when they say, how could, how could we be, how could the earth be so many millions of years old? You know, mm -hmm. and man has only been here such a well, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. God does. Time. God doesn't wear a time mix. No, he doesn't. He didn't create. He doesn't need time. He created time for us. Right. Right. Well, yeah. Oh, oh. So mm -hmm. I got two more verses I want to look up before I start on the next part here, and I'm. It won't be a whole lot longer. First Corinthians two. That's First Corinthians two, fifteen and sixteen, and Second Peter one, three and four. I'll do that one. Okay. Paul wrote Corinthians. Peter wrote the other one. Yep. Okay, who's got 1 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16? These persons with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but just such a person is not subjectly to merely a human judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Yeah, yeah what an awesome thought. Yeah. Does that tell you something about mm. the characteristics, the characteristics that, get, that we uh, that we acquire once we accept Jesus? Once we accept God, we acquire the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. So Second Peter one three and four. Okay, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life, through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Wow. Now you heard that, That's word, that word, that divine nature. Divine you can nature. participate in the divine nature, being with the Holy Spirit living in us once we've received Jesus. We participate in that divine nature, and we are in the, of the mind of Christ. Right, that's that astounding. Tells you we have that DNA right there in us. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about grace. I believe All that right. God's grace is not just a word that we speak to describe what has been done for us, or is something out there waiting for us to receive. God's All grace right. to me is a combination of gifts given to all believers and should be available to others through us. We all have gifts. We all know that. Galatians says we all have gifts. And, uh, and in many other places we all have gifts. And we're supposed to share those gifts, right? Yeah. Okay. That's part of God's grace. Because God's grace allowed us to acquire those gifts. So in other, for, for, we should give that grace back through these gifts to anybody and everybody that we come in contact with. Uh, whether they accept them or not, we, that's what we should. That's what we should show. That's what we should display. Being Christians, first and most important is is an unconditional love for us. Okay, 
That's that's a great gift. We are created in His image and His as His offspring, and after repenting and surrendering our life to Him, we become His children, like we already discussed. Second, He has forgiven us all our sins and remember them no more. I'm talking about what grace is to mean. This forgiveness comes through the blood sacrifice of His Son Jesus Christ, who willingly gave His life for this reason on the cross at Calvary. With His sacrifice, Jesus brought the new covenant of grace and truth. Also, with Jesus' sacrifice and resurrection comes our justification when you need to, you need justification to receive that opportunity for salvation, sanctification, and reconciliation with Father God. Because with His death and resurrection came our justification. I mean, that's all it took. That's all it took for God mm -hmm. was for was for His Son to receive all the sins in the world. And we all are justified in receiving salvation, sanctification, which means being set aside, and, I, and, and then reconciliation with the Father. Uh, anything, anything I say, anybody didn't understand? That's a choice, all right? We still have a choice. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. To receive, go left, yeah. go right. Yeah. That gift of free will is... Still out there all the time. Out there the whole time. Yes. He doesn't want anybody out there that doesn't and don't want to come. fully believe. And right. he doesn't want us he doesn't want anybody to say, Well, he forced me. Right. You right. know, because we always have a choice. And or, because or you were co coerced. Like, if you're coercing somebody you don't love them. No, they're beating you over the head with the Bible telling you you're gonna go to hell if you yeah. don't. My my son, my brother did that to my mother. That's not what that God looks son. like. Not a good oh, thing. Oh, I did that to my son so many times. <laughs> I did that. My brother did that to my mother. And I so after becoming new, a new creation, born again a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside us, and we start on our journey of sanctification. And that's a journey, San full hundred percent sanctification. I don't think we really okay. achieve until we die. All right. Okay. That means being set aside for me. <laughs> yeah. Which which means we're becoming holy and righteous children of God. Mm -hmm. Every little bit, right? Yeah. We move along. That's All right. Yep. That's acquiring oh, the shit. nature and the characteristics of God. And this enables us to share the same grace and mercy with everyone we meet and fulfill God's purpose and plan for our life. Which everybody knows Jeremiah 29, 11, 13. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 13, I don't. Yes, you do. I have a purpose and a plan for you. Yeah, not to harm you, but to prosper you. That, yeah. Not to harm you. Yeah. But uh, and I kind of, this last part I kind of went over. We already t touched on a lot of that stuff in the first part. But I always think it's good to reiterate a message because so many times people leave uh, the sermon or whatever the message the four yeah. walls where the message was given and you ask them five minutes later what was the message about I know oh you definitely and they don't remember you don't and why I want to know there's a, there's a big why for me yeah why and, and it really it really if, if it really should have an effect even though you've heard it before I know in a lot of areas in a lot of ways but I like to go on and go over it again. So we, we just talked about that. Well, I know we just talked about that. But it's important to remember all those things. So, so I believe that God's grace and mercy offered to us is a gift. Grace and mercy are an open invitation to an opportunity through repentance and surrender to receive salvation, forgiveness of sin, and reconciliation with Father God. We understand the word gift to mean something voluntarily given from one person to another or from God to us without any required compensation, without anything at all. Didn't have to work for it. Didn't have to pay for it. Don't have to do anything. In this case, God's gift to us and this, this gift of grace and mercy comes from His love. I mean, unconditional love. And He feels we are deserving of this opportunity. Period. Yep. And, and, I, don't, and I always get a little, a little miffed call it miffed. Irritated. Irritated yeah. when I hear, we don't deserve it. Yeah, we do deserve it. And nobody should hear we don't deserve it. Because we do deserve it. He thought we deserved it. And that's the only thing, that's the only, that's the only thing I need to convince me that I deserve this because God said so. There you go. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I don't need anybody else to tell me I deserved it or didn't that's deserve right. it. That's Yeah. That's it. I'm convinced. Yeah. We've yeah. got two verses left to read and then we're finished. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. First Peter four ten. I got first Peter four ten. Okay. And you're first Peter four ten. Oh four ten, sorry. And Thank you. Ephesians two, eight through ten. Four ten, four ten. Me, me, me. Okay. Okay, you want to go Ephesians, Ephesians first? I let him go first while I get it. Okay. I got it. Okay, first Peter chapter four, verse ten. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received. 
to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Oh, I can. That's a fact. Yep. That's right. Use your gifts. That's a gift. Use them. Use them. And now, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, two. verses 8 through 10. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Mm -hmm. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand mm -hmm. that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Walk in them. Use those gifts. And do things for... Uh, I'm not saying you have to do a physical thing for a person. I mean, sure, it's nice when you can do that, when you right. help somebody out. But I think that just to... Just to walking in with in the presence of the Lord and, and with the with the presence of the Lord in you, displaying that to people is is the most important thing you can do, and not and always having a kind word for someone, a word of encouragement. Uh, you don't necessarily have to pull money out of your pocket or get down and do something for somebody unless they in, they're in need of something, but you. Uh, but you have to, you have to show the living Christ that's in you. So, peace and love. And that's Amen. The end. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, good word, Walter. Oh, thank you. Good word. Good word. Yes.